Muy buenas. Vamos a cubrir la unidad de Financial Mathematics and some of the basic topics that we are going to cover in this study block. This presentation is due in collaboration with two professors, Professor Nelly Alvarado and myself. Now, let's take a look on the things that we will see in this unit, okay? We are going to see what the simple mathematical operations are. We have already covered a little by the time you watch this video. We have already covered a little about the order, um, how to make the numbers correctly, how to do them in Excel. Then we are going to jump into rounding, financial ratios, proportions, we are going to then jump into the simple interest and compound interest. We're going to talk about their basics, the formulas, the examples. Then we're going to go into time, time calculations. We're going to talk about the regular time, the exact time, the conversion periods, and we're going to learn to use the famous tabla del banquero. Let's take a look into what financial mathematics are. According to NC State University, Financial mathematics is the application of mathematical methods to financial problems. It draws on tools from probability, statistics, and economic theory. Traditionally, investment banks, commercial banks, hedge funds, insurance companies, corporate treasuries, and regulatory agencies applied the methods of financial mathematics to such problems as derivative securities, evaluation of derivative securities, the portfolio structuring, the risk management, and scenario simulation. Industries that rely on commodities, for example, the energy companies, the manufacturing companies, also use financial mathematics. Quantitative analysis has brought efficiency and rigor to financial markets and to the investment process, and it is becoming increasingly important in regulatory concerns. Financial mathematics is basically everything that rules us nowadays. Now let's go and see what is rounding. <clears throat> Rounding. Probably you already do this process unconsciously. You probably already see a number and then you jump in and if I tell you you have to do it with two decimals, you probably do it automatically. But we need to see the definition, the categories, and most importantly, we need to see the rules. How do they work? Okay. Rounding is the process through which certain decimals are removed and represented into the nearest number in order to obtain a close and approximate amount. <clears throat> it is represented by this symbol. Okay, example like Russia, 2.95 is pretty much 3. Or square from 2 is 1.41, 42, 13, 5, 6, 2. Its purpose is to simplify calculations, okay? Its greatest disadvantage is that by making calculations with roundups, you lose the accuracy of the final result. So it's not the same to add five values that are rounded than five values with as many decimals as possible. The result will not be the same. The result, the final result, will not be accurate if you make the calculations with rounded numbers. Hmm? It's not the same to add 3 than to add 2.95. Okay. <clears throat> Let's take a look into this example I put here. 2,528,943, comma, 1492. Okay. The decimals affect the final number. Now, if I scratch the last three, then it just becomes with a one, with one decimal. Okay? Now, let's take a look into the basic concepts. Rounding 
means to reduce the digits to its closest value, to its closest value, okay? Let's put here nearest value. The new number is less accurate, but easier to handle. However, oh, it, however, does not entirely represent the original number. And as seen before, if combined with other rounded numbers, they may vary significantly from the real result had they not been rounded before. Let's review the place of values. Now, this is something you now have to learn from now on, okay? I'm going to say this in Spanish first so that you remember what we're talking about, okay? Here on the ones spot, we're going to start from this to the left. And then I'm going to jump from the period to the right, okay? Again, I'm going to start with the ones to the left read them in Spanish, and then from the period to the right and read them in Spanish so that you remember what we're talking about here. Decimas, centesimas, oh, this is unidades, des, decenas, centenas, unidades de millar, decenas de millar, centenas de millar, unidades de millón, and so on and so forth. This is the one that we were taught in Spanish, unidades, decenas, centenas, this is the one from the left. Now, the ones to the right are uh, decimos, centimos, millesimos, and, and so on and so forth to the right. Okay? Those are the ones that now we are going to learn in English. Okay? So, if I tell you round it to the nearest 10, you know I'm talking about this. If I tell you round it to the nearest hundreds, I'm talking about here. Okay, two decimals. If I say round it to the nearest hundredth, then I'm talking about the second position, which means two decimals. If I tell you round it to the nearest thousands, I'm telling you use three decimals. Okay? That is why this is so important because if you do not know when I tell you round it to, and I you don't remember the correct position. Therefore, you will not use the decimals required. Again, we are going to take into consideration the ones to the right. Tens, hundreds, thousands, ten thousands, hundred thousands, and millions. So if I tell you round it to the nearest thousands, it is the position, position number three. Therefore, three decimals. Okay? Very good. Basic instructions. We first need to know what digit we need to round it to. Okay? This is exactly what I just told you. First, you need to know what digit you need to round it to. For example, when rounding to the next tenth, look at it here. I put it here. Round it to the next tenth means that I'm asking for one decimal. Okay? When I say the nearest tenth, again, I'm asking for one decimal. Rule number one, when requested to round it to the tenth, or for this matter, to any other spot, and following and the following digit is either five or higher, for example, like this case, you see, I'm asking you to round it to the nearest tenth. So I already know that you, you just need one decimal, okay? But this decimal, okay, oh, that the following digit, the following digit, the one you have to erase, is five or higher, like in this case it's the six, then you have to increase the previous number by one. So you delete the number six and the number five becomes six. Not because this was a six, again. This may be an eight. It is higher than five. It's either five or higher. So you scratch the number, okay? And the following one, the one you just have to remain, the one you have to stay, switches from 5 into 6. Okay? So 3, five, uh, three period 56 rounded to the next tenth is 3.6, the same way 3.58 or 3.59 or whatever number is there. Why? Because I asked you to round it to the nearest tenth. 
Had I told you to round it to the nearest hundredth is the same thing, okay? You just have to take into consideration what number are you erasing? You are erasing this. Is it higher than five or even five? Yes. Okay. So you delete it, but the number that you are keeping increases by one. Okay. I put you here the arrow so that you remember uh, how many decimals I'm asking from you. You're being asked to round to the next tenth. Therefore, only one digit can stay after the comma. The rest needs to be eliminated. Okay? And here, nearest. Rules. Rule number two. When the digit to evaluate is smaller than five, and, and oh, okay, I'm not saying five or smaller than five. I'm just saying smaller than five then the staying digit remains the same. Example of Grasha, 3.33, round it to the nearest tenth, round it to the nearest tenth, is 3.3. .3. Why? Because the number you're going to delete is lower than 5. Therefore, you delete it, but nothing happens to the previous one. Okay? Again, this is the position. You are being asked to leave only one digit behind, one-tenth, after the comma. Then the following digits need to be erased. Okay, let's pause right here and see if you have questions so far.